All right, so to so start with the motherboard, you're just going to want to make sure you go ahead and clear out the whole area, get everything out of the way. So we're going to have to begin with going to our hardware box and getting out all the screws and motherboard uh, mounts, all that stuff. Sometimes it's best if we just go ahead and pour this into a small bowl or something like that. Wow, this thing's difficult to open. Jesus Christ. Okay. Oh, well, this is nice. They went ahead and uh, separated everything. Drive screws, motherboard standoff. Oh, I like when they, uh, for the motherboard standoffs, sometimes they include this little nut driver, which helps a lot. Because um, if they have a heavy paint job, sometimes it's really hard to get those standoffs into the case. But that little thing is a lifesaver. So here's what we need first, the standoffs, little brass pieces. And what you're going to want to do is look at your motherboard. You're going to have to get an idea of where the holes are laid out. Now since this is a full size motherboard, you have the pretty much standard three rows, boom, 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 one, two, three, one, two, three. They all pretty much go in a straight line. And usually um, they'll mark the case. They'll say ATX or micro ATX or whatever. This one doesn't, but I mean, if you just look at this again, you'll see one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. And you really don't have many options for that. You can see the holes here. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Those are the only three rows of holes that actually line up. So that's what we're going to go with. So you're going to want to go ahead and take your motherboard standoffs. And you start by just filling in the holes that we know are going to line up with our motherboard. So in this case, the three rows. There's the middle. I'm surprised these are actually going in really smoothly. I don't think we'll even need that little nut driver. So that means they just they did a good job with the tolerances, which is good. Well, I like it if they showed a little more confidence in themselves, though. They shouldn't even include that thing with the way these things are going in. Ooh. Yeah, this is a, the tedious kind of stuff that you have to deal with building computers. Just these stupid little standoffs. Something I've never really enjoyed, but as a requirement, you don't really have a choice. All right. So there you have that. I don't know if you could see those, all nine. Now what you're going to want to do next is get the back plate. The reason for this is if you just go ahead and put the motherboard on now, what's going to happen is you're not going to be able to get that back plate in there. It basically has to go in first because the motherboard goes down, but it also pushes towards the back. So go ahead and get this bad boy out. And just, uh, well, that's not going to work if that's in the way. Just want to line it up. Audio is usually at the bottom. They always have the USB or PS2 at the top. So you just take it in from the inside, get it nice and snug, and it basically just pops in. Boom. Boop. All right. So before I go ahead and try to mount the motherboard, you're going to want to go look for your motherboard screws. It's 11 pieces. We only need nine. We'll get those out. And this is pretty self-explanatory. You just take the motherboard and gently push it against the back plate. And that's going to get you in the general region you need to be at. And see, right there, we're perfect. That is exactly where we want to be. So for sanity's sake, I'm going to go ahead and 
and put a couple of screws in with my hand because the motherboard is going to want to push off of that back plate. It's just, it's got a little spring to it. Just get a couple in so it doesn't move. There we go. All our holes are lined up perfectly. Okay, now that we have it locked in place, you're just going to want to go ahead and do the rest of them. Probably speed up the video right here a little bit. Maybe. Now, if you're using an electric screw gun like I am, be careful you don't over torque the thing. This one's pretty decent because it's gyroscopic, so you can kind of, you know, feel it out as you're screwing it in. Ooh. Hey, when that happens, I'm gonna have to do this one manually. It's a little too close, I think. Yeah, we're having trouble there. I'll come back to that one. Oops, no big deal, as long as the baby doesn't get that. That one didn't give me any trouble. That one, is, ow! I don't know why that one's being difficult. Sometimes you just get a funky one. Let's see if we can get this in there. Come on, buddy. That's a bad spot. Come on. There we go. There we go. Nice and tight. Solid.